Hi, I'm Jamie, your host for season two of the Not Going to Uni podcast, where we talk all things emerging talent and alternative routes to university. In today's episode, we talk to Abrasham, a cybersecurity degree apprentice at Vodafone. Hi, Abrasham, welcome to the NGTU podcast. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, Jamie. I'm doing well. What about yourself? Good. Yeah, all good. Thank you. All good. Great to have you on the podcast. Um, for our audience, could you give us a brief introduction to yourself, please? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Abrasham Azad. I am a second year Vodafone Cybersecurity degree apprentice, and I am also the co-founder of AI Mentoring, which is a platform for aspiring apprentices to receive support from current mentors or degree apprentices to have the best opportunity to succeed in this vigorous recruitment process. Amazing. Thank you so much for that introduction. And like I said, great to have you on. Um, I guess for our audience and also myself, as we haven't been introduced properly before, um, it'd be great to have like a general overview of your journey to date um, and what you've been up to in, in the recent months. Yeah, sure. So my journey began in end of year 12 when I actually found out about degree apprenticeship. So I was the usual lost kid. I was about to apply for chemistry for university. Oh, I wow. didn't know what I was doing. Then I shifted to pharmacy, yet I was a bit clueless. I didn't know my career pathway. But then I found out from one of my friend's brothers that he was doing a degree apprenticeship. And I was actually quite intrigued by the fact that you can do a bachelor's degree with no student loans, no student debt, whilst gaining three to four years of experience. And not only that, after you have the opportunity to secure a full-time job. And I was thinking, wow, that's amazing. So why don't I start applying for this? Yeah. So it, that, this would take me back to 2021 of October. That's when I started, you know, getting my CV together. Does that, does that feel like a distant memory now? <laughs> it does. It feels, it feels like a really, really long time from now just because of so many things that have taken place from them. And I see I, that's that's one of the benefits that I talk about after of being an apprentice. But taking me back to 2021, I started applying, I made my CV. It was quite slow. It was quite slow. Uh, only a few companies were uh, opening up the applications. For, for Vodafone specifically, I applied in January 2022. I sent an application with my CV and they got back to me end of January. So I did an online interview. So for those who are not aware or familiar with the online interview, so it's hosted by Hireview platform and there is no interviewer, which is strange. There's no interviewer and they just pop in the questions. You have a minute to prepare. And then I, th I think if I'm not mistaken, two to three minutes to give an answer and roughly four to five questions, motivational based and competency based questions. After that, End of March, I got an email saying that I made it to the assessment center. And to be honest, Jimmy, I was really surprised because that interview was shambolic, in my opinion. It was shambolic. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I was a bit nervous. I was shaking. My answers were not, I wasn't pulling the strings together. So I was like, okay, hold on. I made it to the assessment center. That is strange. But you know what? Opportunities, they only come once. So took the opportunity, head down for two weeks. I did pause my A-level revisions at that time. Uh, we also touched up on that balancing everything. I stopped two, two weeks for A-level revision and I, I got my head down for Vodafone. I was like, I have to make it. It was nearly April time. So a month and a half later, my A-level exams will start. So everything was chaotic, it's hectic times. And the assessment center came, it was the 6th of April, 2022. Wow, you remember those dates? <laughs> I, I remember the exact specific dates. It was a Wednesday, 6th of April, and... Was it raining? <laughs> no, it, it was virtual. It was virtual. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, as in due to COVID, they, they, they took everything from in person to, 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 um, course, course. to online. So it was all, all, all virtual. And yeah, that day was amazing. In terms of the interview, smashed it, completely aced it. The, the senior manager, he was really pleased. There was a group exercise in the early morning, which I was a bit shaky. I did okay, but I wasn't too sure if I did the best. Yeah. But then after that one-to-one -one interview, I was more confident. And at the end of the day, it was a presentation task. So they'll, pre they'll present me a problem. I had to come up with a solution and present it for 15 minutes and then a 15 minute Q&A with the senior manager. <clears throat> and after that, and 
uh, two days later, I got a call from Vodafone saying that I got the job offer. So I was like, amazing. I got my degree of friendship. That's a quick time. Um, yeah, and it was, it was just before A-levels. In terms of timing, it made it really, really good because it's just before A-levels. All the pressure was off my shoulders. Now I can just focus on my A-levels. And going forward to August 2022, I think 18th of August, that's when A-level results came out. Very happily, I did get all A-stars. So A-star in maths, A-star in biology, A-star in chemistry. And then moving forward, uh, September, October, end of September is when I started my degree apprenticeship. So this is when I came into the corporate world as a college student, I had no idea. So it was, there was a huge change, huge change of environment where I had to meet deadlines. I had to come on time for meetings. There was that pressure, that work pressure where you have to deliver to a certain extent and you're not being spoon fed like you were in college. And this kept going on, on and on until 2023 where I was nominated for the Multicultural Apprenticeship Awards. And I actually made as a finalist for the uh, digital and technology category. And then going forward to last year, October, I actually came top four in the UK for the digital and technology category as That's an apprentice, which, which is again, amazing for a first year apprentice, only having done one or two projects. And in the summer of 2023, so last year, this is when I actually started my organization or you can call it a business or a platform called AI Mentoring. And this is where my passion i'm able to let out my passion for apprenticeships come out and display to everyone this is this is actually we're solving a problem where a lot of people that want to get into apprenticeships they don't have the resources they don't have a mentor and they don't have that online research abilities they won't have the information so when i was applying the main struggle was to understand and to know how to ace those interviews so i would have to spend nights upon nights researching, okay, what is the STAR method? How do I go into a group exercise? What, what are the best tips? How do I present? How do I present in a very coherent manner so that the interviewer will be pleased? So many aspects of the recruitment process where I had no knowledge and I had to just research by myself night upon night. And it was a pain in the back. Like I must admit that it was a pain in the back. And what we've done now at AI Mentoring is that we're solving this problem where you don't need to do all of these struggles and efforts, but rather you will have a dedicated mentor in the field that you are applying for. So for example, if I was applying for cybersecurity and I contacted AI Mentoring, they will provide me a mentor, a current degree apprentice that's doing cybersecurity that will be your dedicated mentor. One-to-one -one that will help you with your CV, online interviews and assessment centers. If I had that, I would have saved myself hours and hours of efforts. So essentially this is what AI Mentoring does. It will help you. And we, not only that, we have already helped numerous of students. So our top students, for example, we've had a software engineer at KPMG. He is a second year uh, software engineer at KPMG. We've helped a student just recently get a tax consultancy offer from Deloitte. We've helped a female student get a, an, an audit offer from KPMG. We've helped another student get an audit offer from Mazars, and we are now in the stage where a lot of our students are getting assessment centers. So hopefully we'll have even more students and clients getting offers from top top companies. So this model is really helpful and we have number and number of testimonials where students are saying this is so helpful. So to those who are listening, if you are in need of apprenticeship help, do reach out to us and of course, we will do our best to help you. And, and, and from the and from the mentoring, yeah. uh, mentoring side, uh, if if I'm someone listening and 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 keen to be a part of that, how, how what does that look like for potential mentors? If you want to be mentor, yeah, of course, get in touch with us. You would have the opportunity to be compensated first of all for your time and efforts and experience. You would have the opportunity to work and improve your skills. So mentoring might not be for everyone. You know, you might be an expert in your field, you might be very technical, but you might not have the communication abilities, you might not be able to actually offer that help. And that is something that we will train you with. We, we provide ex exclusive training to our mentors where we'll tell you, okay, this is how you help someone with a CV, this is how you help someone with an online interview, and this is someone, this is somehow you help someone with an assessment center. And mentors will again they enjoy as well at AI mentoring and 
the main thing with with our mentors is that the level of satisfaction that they get with you know helping students get an offer that is something that you know i have had my partner has had and even other mentors that i'm entering it's something huge the satisfaction is immense no, that's, that's really great and it, it's great that you've been able to spiral that from obviously your day job and and continue that for the apprenticeships that you obviously have and be able to help others i think that that's really a nice way of, of obviously putting it into something productive yeah. um, to take a rewind or i guess on a couple of things um in terms of getting into cyber security it's becoming a very popular uh industry uh, more than ever due to obviously every technological advancement that's happened in, in the in the modern day and age but what i know we chatted kind of off camera about your kind of journey to to date so far but what why cyber security what what got you into that interest why why this program with vodafone yeah that's that's a really good question i never planned to get into cyber security it wasn't like an aim of mine that i always wanted to get into cyber security so when i was applying for degree apprenticeships i applied for a variety of roles this included project management some were healthcare based with nhs and some were technical so software engineering data analyst cyber security in terms of cyber specifically cyber security i think vodafone was one of the only companies that applied for for this specific role so if i was to tell you did i have a passion for cyber security earlier the answer would be no because i never knew cyber security but now that i've come into cyber security it is a huge field i think and I, if someone wants to get into technology and the technical side of you know the career this is the best place it's it's so huge it's so huge because you have you can work with data you can work in pen testing ethical hacking you can work in governance and compliance so it's not just that a lot of people have a misconception where you need to know how to code for cyber security and that is a misconception because that's utterly not true you can be someone non-technical and still work in cyber security for example work with gdpr or work with other sort of regulatory uh, compliances and me specifically currently i'm working with uh, data loss prevention so we help vodafone prevent any data leakages any data breaches so i never had a history with cyber security but now i'm loving it it's such a huge space and i can go into whichever part of cyber i want to no that's that's great and what for someone who is aspiring to work in cyber security what would a kind of typical day look like is it is it kind of some common practices that you kind of do every single day obviously depending on on projects that you're working on i'm assuming but can you dive a little bit more for our audience in terms of what does a typical day or slash week look like for a cyber security apprentice yeah sure so in the world of technology there are a few common stuff but again it would vary between company to company it would vary between what sort of projects you're in but a rough idea would be when you log in obviously everyone checks their emails you see if there's anything popping in and out but something very common is a daily stand up within the world of technology this is where essentially you're not standing up is virtually of course <laughs> so everyone would come in within the project or within your team and they would discuss what they did the previous day what they are going to do today and if there are any blockers or dependencies so for example if i can't do a certain task due to another certain event or a certain approval and this would be raised to the agile delivery manager and essentially this allows some form of alignment and coordination between all the team members and sometimes i might say oh i am struggling with this and there'll be another team member oh i can help you so it's just a way for everyone to connect after the daily stand up, we would have everyone would go off to do their projects, to do their work. We would have something called an art sync. So most technology companies follow the agile methodology where you are de delivering every sprint, which is two weeks. So in the art sync, we have other teams. So not just your team, sub team. We have all the teams within the broader team. They come together and then they discuss all the updates from every single team. Again, it's a form of alignment and coordination. In terms of day to day, I'll do the daily stand up. I would have a few meetings related to specific projects. So I might catch up with my manager, I might catch up with my mentor, I might catch up with a few senior engineers in terms of what they can help with me and my reporting and whatnot. And usually afternoons might be a bit quiet depending on what project you're on. 
but yeah it's just head down get the work done so let's say for currently i'm working on a few documentation papers which will take my projects that i'm leading for approval stages so currently i'm working on two projects and they need approval from the head of cyber security of vodafone so it's just a lot of uh, documentation getting that approved and you know fixing the fixing the documents and just pushing that through currently that's what i'm working on so i think that's roughly what it would look like and how and how have you balanced obviously the the degree side of it i think it's a well well known spoken about issue across apprentices that some obviously do struggle with the workload and obviously that affects social life which i wanted to get into also in this episode but i guess how have you dealt with it first of all and and how have you found it and what would be i guess your advice to anyone who is maybe doing apprenticeship already and is maybe struggling with the workload or those that are concerned about doing a full-time job and a full a degree on the side like what's been your experience so far yeah absolutely i think this is probably the the biggest uh issue that an aspiring apprentice might have which is how do you balance this you know full-time corporate world corporate job nine to five and also balancing a full-time bachelor's of science degree again totally understandable and i'm not going to sugarcoat it it is difficult without a doubt it's very difficult because you're studying for a full-time degree and you're working full-time it will be very difficult my only advice to myself first of all and to everyone is that you you really have to brush up your time management skills your organization skills this is the only way it will be difficult this is why I always tell myself that, you know, you can't achieve great things without difficulty and obstacles and, you know, perseverance and patience. So someone, someone shouldn't be put off by the fact that, oh, yes, I might have less time, but they should think that, oh, within three to four years, I'll be ahead of 95% of my peers. And I'll, you know, I'll be in a great financial situation. I would have a lot of years of experience under my belt. But going back to your question, in terms of, time management four days off my week is for Vodafone work and one day is for uni for my university on a weekly basis we have a three-hour lecture in the mornings usually Fridays and the afternoon will be spent on researching your assignments catching up on previous PowerPoint slides or doing uh, university reading and to be honest you do have to use your leisure time and free time sometimes so even the weekends or you know the weekdays afternoons for example when we would come close to the assignment deadline let's say three to four weeks before i would have to you know start going into my weekend time i would have to start going into the weekdays time and this is this is a sacrifice that apprentices have to make you have to make that if you want to have you know the benefits which is you know no student loan no student debt you know three to four years worth of experience and finally my, my advice would be to just communicate with your workplace and also communicate with your university side i think this is the best advice that i can give a lot of people they don't want to communicate with the managers if they are struggling with the university side for example my i think one or two modules before i had two to three assignments coming together for one deadline so i had to speak to a manager and tell her look i have two to three assignments that are coming up for a deadline could i have a few more days for my study so she gave me a few more days off work so I can focus on university. But if you don't do that, then you're just going to drown, essentially. Slow down there, yeah. It's yeah. going to slow down. You know, you're going to increase your level of anxiety and it will become a problem. So communication is really, really important. That's what I can say. And how did you find that, I guess, rewinding slightly for you in terms of school? And, and obviously you, you completely smashed your A-levels out of the park, but that didn't come easily, right? That took a lot of a lot of time. Yeah. How did you how did you find that transition applying what you had to do for obviously your A levels going into the workplace? Like you mentioned it was obviously quite a big change, but I guess what 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 was the the hardest changes for you? And I guess how did you or how have you overcome overcome them to to, to date? Yeah, I guess, I guess the, the, the biggest challenge is it goes back to planning and time management because of the number of projects that you have. It, sometimes it, it might happen that you might miss a deadline or you might not have communicated with a stakeholder or something's not aligned. And considering the caliber of Vodafone, how big it is, that is very likely to happen. And it has happened to me. I've made a lot of mistakes as well in terms of time, time management, not planning ahead. And 
the best way to overcome this is always to ask feedback. Like every single college student that will go into an apprenticeship, you are prone to make mistakes. You will make a lot of mistakes. That's absolutely normal. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be feeling down. But you should have that proactive approach where you're asking for feedback. Like with my manager, my mentor, I'm always asking, okay, if I've done something wrong, please do communicate it with me. If I've, you know, if I can improve on this area, please tell me. And we already we have monthly catch up where obviously I present my progress and they provide feedback. And by doing that on a monthly basis, I know where I'm going wrong, I know what I'm doing well. And in the next monthly progress, I'll try to implement all of that feedback and then ask again, was I able to implement it properly? If not, then what can I do? So it's about asking for feedback, taking action, having a plan, what can I do? And then seeing, have I actually achieved that? And if not, what can I do? Do, so I think, do, you, do, you, do you feel as though you get a good level of trust within your role? Because I think a lot of people aspiring to do an apprenticeship worry that, I mean, common conceptions here that you you, you make the tease or like those really <laughs> old conceptions that people yeah. sometimes still believe. But like, did, obviously it, can't, it comes with time, right? And, and, and the level of quality that you put into your work. But have you been able to kind of gain that trust from your peers within the organisation that, yeah. that you do and, and what you can be trusted to, to complete and achieve? Yeah, I think 100%. And this is something, this is an advantage of working at a big corporation in comparison to smaller corporations where you would have complaints but if you were to work for if you were to work for a smaller organization where you would you might not be treated right you might be looked down upon that that rarely happens at a big company like Vodafone from the first day there was full trust from my manager from my team and because of that I have the freedom and flexibility to work how I want I don't have someone looking at over my shoulder 24 7 micromanaging me and because of that trust i'm able to deliver to the best of my ability and that that misconception has to be removed like 100 percent. like it's not true like my team my manager has been always supportive of me they've trusted me and i've de i've delivered because if i had someone over my shoulder looking 24 7 that would have been nice yeah. and I, I, essentially nobody wants that so yeah in terms of trust and role no one has looked down on me i am treated as an equal employee and an equal team member and they would assign me tasks where i would think oh am i even capable of this but yeah, yeah a lot of imposter syndrome as well yeah of course i mean yeah. i mean on on imposter syndrome is that something that you've kind of experienced in your apprenticeship yeah. as in uh, imposter syndrome does kicking in the beginning of your apprenticeship. I think that's like that's I think every apprentice will agree with you hundred yes. percent I think because you've essentially with me i have I've never studied computer science at GCC. I've never studied computer science at A levels and yet I am in the world of technology, which is strange. So here I am with five senior engineers talking about Microsoft DLP, AIP, all of these technicalities and I'm sitting. What's this? What's that? So yeah, hundred percent. I think imposter syndrome just kick in, but I think it's just again, you know, positive talk to yourself and understanding that as an apprentice, you will start from scratch. They will teach you, and no one is looking down on you. I think that helped me. So by now, it's imposter syndrome has gone. Uh, I'm gonna make an assumption as well that uh, in your in kind of Vodafone's intake, they obviously take on obviously more than one apprentice, and they've got multiple different programs. So. I want to touch upon that kind of side of, of starting with people, not only that might be school leavers such as yourself, but they might be obviously career changers. And I think that's the conception that we, a misconception that we need to kind of break down as well is that apprenticeships aren't just for those school leavers. Like they're becoming more and more common for those people, career changing, they might be midway through um, a, a, a particular industry or path. And they're just like, no, that's not for me. And I think that's where apprenticeships are really, really come into play for for the wider audience um but like how did you first of all did you start with many people in your apprenticeship and like how has that uh, benefited not only kind of your working relationship but also personal relationships outside of work that you're obviously able to have a social life and be able to go out with people and etc yeah as in you made a really good point where apprentices are not just for school leavers it's, it's basically for anyone anyone that you know, is capable and meets the eligibility criteria. And to answer that question, yes, I think within my cohort for cybersecurity, we had six intakes, 
and I think two left for whatever reason. And we had just four people left uh, within the my cohort. And surprisingly, there is uh, one of my colleagues. He is actually much older than I am. I am currently 20. So I started when I was 18. He is maybe in his 22, 23, maybe mid 20s. So he did a sports science degree. And obviously, in terms of he didn't have as many career opportunities. So he decided to come to technology. and that's that's the probably the best example someone that did com completely different to technology anything related to it and then he just diverted into technology i have another colleague another apprentice she is on she is in her late 20s and she did she was more in the hospitality sector but then she moved to data analyst she moved to a data analyst role so again two very good examples and in terms of outside of vodafone work yeah as in social life is there, as in, I don't know why people have this misconception where, you know, you're going to be stuck on a laptop for the whole day, you're just going to be writing assignments, so they know, absolutely not, as in, I, I've been into the office many times, there are a lot of friends that I've made at Vodafone, within my cohort, above my cohort, some people go for drinks, others don't, as in, I personally don't, but then again, there's so many activities that you can do at Vodafone, we have the youth committee, they organize a lot of events, for us apprentices, graduates, and interns. So again, there's always the opportunity to mingle with other apprentices, people that are just starting their career. And that allows networking, which is a huge, huge aspect within the corporate world. You want to speak to as many people as you want. You want to make as many connections as you want. And as an apprentice, I've definitely been able to do that. So I don't see an issue with my social life. I, I think I'm doing great, as in I'm happy. You can see I'm, I'm doing really happy. So. I'm doing well and in terms of work it's fine as well it's just it's just balancing it and yes you might not have as much of a social life if you were to go to university but you do have a social life and it's just about accepting and being able to sacrifice balancing that yes i have a work life i have a uni life i have a social life but it might be minimized the leisure time might be minimized now, and and on the networking side, how important has that been for kind of your development internally at Vodafone, but also obviously to start to start the business that you have done? Yeah, no, hundred percent. As in, within Vodafone, networking is so important. As in, I have reached out to different senior managers, and because of that, I was able to get into different projects. For example, I reached out to someone within the email side of cybersecurity. And because of that, I was able to work on an automation piece for our phishing system within Vodafone. And I was actually able to automate it and make it more efficient by 85.71%, if that was correct. So again, being able to have that impact. And even I've reached out to managers within incident management. I've reached out to colleagues within ethical hacking just to get an understanding of different teams. So networking is so important because it gives you those opportunities and you know who to speak to when. So let's say now I am in data loss prevention, I want to move into ethical hacking. Because I've already made those specific connections, I can just say, hey, they say, hey, Bob, how's it going? Yeah, you know, I was thinking of doing pen testing. You know, do you know who I could speak to higher up? Do you know what I should do? X, Y, and Z. So yeah, networking is really important. And within Vodafone, and it just, in general, in the corporate world, it's, it's really important. You, you do need to know people. And in terms of outside of Vodafone, again, I've been networking with the numerous of degree apprentices and again this has helped me with obviously my business that I'm entering where I now can reach out to different current degree apprentices for them to become a mentor at AI mentoring so let's say for example a student comes into AI mentoring he needs support for pick a role let's say and go on pick a role Jamie specific role uh, um Christ Just uh, you. put me on the spot um yeah, a, a data analyst degree apprentice. Well, a data analyst. So someone wants to be a data analyst at pick a company. <laughs> um, Bank of America. Bank of America. Okay. So someone wants to be a data analyst at the Bank of America. So this is what they want to do. So what we would do is, and this is what we specialize in, is, is we will provide you a mentor that is a current degree apprentice who's doing the data analytics program at the Bank of England. Do you say Bank of America or Bank of England? Okay. <laughs> America. America, okay, sorry, Bank of America. So again, making those um, those connections and those that 
aspect of networking will help me. I already know these people at the variety of companies. Someone at BT, I know a lot of degree friends at BT, PwC, EY, KPMG, Deloitte. So it's just it makes my business really easy. And, and if someone them. if someone comes along and you don't necessarily have an immediate connection to that company, what's your this might be giving away your business secrets here, but like, what's your process to kind of making sure that you do have the, that right person so you're not essentially losing a a customer or a client, if you like, of, of that program? Yeah, so there's, in, there's, there's two ways. So obviously within my network of degree apprentices, I can use a referral system. So I'll, I might have a mentor who knows another degree apprentice in that uh, field specific field or we would use linkedin i think linkedin is probably the best space where you know all the degree apprentices are there um everyone in the corporate world has a profile so as in we can do our searches there and it's quite similar to recruitment we'll just go find someone speak to them and explain our project and of course if they're happy to onboard with us then we would get them uh, we would onboard them as a mentor but i think mostly most of the time it's the referral where you know someone knows someone that knows somebody and that makes yeah. life really easy yeah yeah and and to go back to obviously the networking side i mean you became an energy ambassador kind of what i think it's just uh, under a year ago i think you became an ambassador so yeah. i guess how has that program contributed to obviously the networking side and, and i guess any advice for people looking to join that program what how have you found it and what's kind of been the core benefits that you've experienced as being part of the program? Yeah, as in joining uh, NGTU, I think it's it's really good because, and I want to touch upon this topic of personal brand. I think this is really important for someone that has come from the college world into the corporate world. You might not be seen as much. You might not be as visible to the world as much. But again, get in touch with these organizations like ngt you will now have a platform like I'm, I'm doing a podcast right now with yourself and i did a content shoot last july in near kent with uh perisha yeah she was a perisha was there yeah so th there's a lot of opportunities to just get yourself out there who you are uh, what you represent and another benefit would be just improving your soft skills to be honest as in me in college and me now are two different people like I would never raise my hand for a question in college never you never see me I was even my biology teacher she described me as you know the quiet one that gets his head down I guess the result that's it but again now coming into this corporate world you have to speak you have to be confident you have to be proactive and this is one of the ways you know joining NGTU you will have the opportunities to make content TikTok content you might be able to make blogs you might have the opportunity to come on a podcast a virtual podcast just like this one you might be able to do a content shoot and this really increases your confidence you know you're getting yourself on camera and before I started an apprenticeship I, I was never on camera so it was something nerve-wracking but again you have to break those barriers and fears so in terms of soft skills communication in terms of personal brand definitely a huge huge boost for myself you know I'm just getting myself out there I'm talking about an apprenticeship and you're able to talk about what you're passionate about and for me that's apprenticeships and that's exactly what I'm doing here and also talking about AI mentoring and it just, it's, there, there's so many benefits so if you are someone that wants to you know improve your personal brand get your name out there you know you want to improve who you are like personal development improving your skills then definitely I think NGTU there, there are a lot of other organizations that you can get in touch with so huge huge boost for yourself and what does what does kind of the the future look like for yourself obviously you've got I'm guessing a couple of years left in your apprenticeship which I assume obviously you're gonna you're gonna see through um with Ryan Colors and what I guess you're you're learning different things each day within your role but what's the kind of what's the kind of longer term plan for yourself have you have you got one yeah as in uh days are busy weeks are hectic so not looking too far ahead but as in I do have a plan of course as in firstly I do have two years uh two to I finished end of 2026 so two to three years left of my degree apprenticeship hopefully I would like to onboard uh off board into a Vodafone role I think that'll be really good just to build a foundation of my career in terms of you know the cyber security and of course the corporate world corporate experience i think it would be really good obviously I'm, i am familiar to, with vodafone so it'd be good to afford however i do have the options of going into other companies 
due to my three to four years of work experience at Vodafone. So options are not limited. But in terms of um, longer plans, I would want to work in the Middle East. I think this is just something I want to do, just traveling, um, going to different countries. So yeah, as in perhaps in the Middle East, of course, if I can't, then, you know, I might be here in the UK, maybe in the Europe. So yeah, not not too sure in terms of where I'll be, but definitely a career abroad might be. Just see, yeah. just see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I guess to, to summarize then um, of, of this episode for anyone listening that might be similar to yourself, older but also obviously the school leaver age and a bit younger considering all options kind of what what would you advise them knowing what you know now from obviously your experiences and obviously the business you've been able to set up what's your kind of top advice for listeners yeah so i'll split this advice into two so for those who want to get into the world of technology and then advice for those who just want to get into an apprenticeship so for those who want to get into tech specifically my advice would be that you don't need a technical background or technical experience to get into a technical apprenticeship and this is something that i realized very late into my journey because i was always anxious in terms of oh will they put me on the spot with a coding question will they ask me about operating system will they ask me about some technical questions that i might not have studied or know about and that was never the case it was mostly about your motivation it was mostly about your skills and this is what actually matters and that is the beauty of apprenticeships where you don't need to know that field specifically and i never had to learn about cyber security before but they will build you up from scratch and they will teach you from scratch so this is my advice for those who want to get into tech an apprenticeship in te technology and for those who want to get into um, an apprenticeship in general i think my advice would be to make sure that you know how to smash those interviews at the end of the day you can work as much as you want you know make your cv to the best of your ability but if you can't make it to the assessment center and you can't smash those days then you won't succeed because you could potentially apply to 40 companies get to 40 assessment centers and yet fail all of them and not have an apprenticeship at the end of your journey but rather someone might apply to four apprenticeships get into four assessment centers and smash all four assessment centers and get four job offers so i think it's just knowing how i think that's the main thing for someone that wants to do an apprenticeship how how do i smash an interview how do i smash an assessment center and if you don't know then there are people that will help you and that's the main point you don't have to get in touch with them entering there are a lot of people a lot of organizations out there there are people on linkedin but of course as in as the co-founder of AI Mentoring, I will say that do reach out to us. This is something that we can definitely help. And another advice would be be confident. I think a lot of people miss this out. We, we've had students, well, quite unfortunately, that they, we prepared them really well. All the preparation that they needed, all the resources, all the knowledge was in their brain, but they weren't confident on the day. They were very nervous. So you could know everything. You might be prepared, you might know the how, but if you're not confident, then on the day you will tremble and you won't be able to speak a word, you won't be able to pull sentences together. So yeah, I think my top three advices would be, you don't need a technical background for a technical apprenticeship. Make sure you know the house or be prepared, do your preparations well, you know, get in touch with their mentoring, get in touch with other organizations, you know, do yourself a favor, don't go through the struggle that I went through. And lastly, be confident, you know, <coughs> prepare well and go into the day knowing that you will smash and you get the job of